What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina and we are on part two of our series of how to plan dives. In the first part, we determined that we was going to a depth of 100 feet and that 34% enriched air nitrox is going to be the best blend for that particular depth and it's going to give us a maximum of 30 minutes underwater before we kind of put our body into decompression. Now once again, we're still only planning recreational, no decompression dives here, so we're not going to be getting too technical in it, but what we're going to focus on in this video is how how to determine what cylinder size is going to be best for you for that particular dive. Now one thing that I can't do is tell you exactly what's going to work best for you, but I can tell you what's going to work best for me based off my personal SAC and RMV rate. And if you've got any questions on how to determine what your SAC and RMV rate, check out the videos in the links below or check out these links up here and I'll show you how to calculate what your SAC and RMV rate based off what cylinder size and what workload you're going to be using or dealing with. So my personal SAC rate and RMV rate, I'm gonna list up here at the top, and I need to throw this in real quick. All these dives that are, all the dives that I do are based off the rule of thirds. I have a third of my tank pressure to actually use to get to my depth and do my dive. I have a second third to actually make it back to my exit point, and then I have a final third for emergencies and anything like that. So we're gonna be basing this off the rule of thirds. So my personal SAC rate, of course, is around eight to 10 PSI a minute based off what cylinder I'm using or what my workload is. And my RMV rate is simply 0.21 cubic feet a minute, so it's not even a quarter of a cubic foot, if you will. Now, the problem with these numbers is it's only for the surface. It's not actually going to be at depth, so we need to calculate for our given depth, which is 100 feet or 30 meters. That works down to 4.03 atmospheres, or total pressure, if you will, total atmospheric pressure surrounding your body. So that total atmospheric pressure, if you needed to, or if you're curious in how we determine that, simply check out another link down in the description on absolute pressures, and I'll walk you through the procedure of how we determine that as well. Now, with that being said, at a depth of 100 feet, my sac of course would be 40 psi a minute my rmv rate would actually change to 0.84 cubic feet a minute and so that means i'm actually breathing up four times the amount of gas as what i do at the surface and i need to know that number simply because i need to know how long a cylinder will last so it helps me choose the best cylinder say for a 100 foot dive to 30 minutes. So with all that being said, I'm gonna use the two most common cylinders that I use day in and day out, which is the Aluminum 80 and the Steel 100. The Aluminum 80 is probably the most standard cylinder throughout the world. You can pretty much find them through any dive op. And of course, they're pressurized to 3000 PSI. The Steel 100 is a very common cylinder as well, especially here in our area and it's a high pressure cylinder and it's pressurized to 3442 psi now here's the problem with both of those i can't actually use the working pressures of the cylinder because if i did i would actually probably run out of gas i need to base it off the rule of thirds so based off the rule of thirds, I understand that two thirds of the workable pressure here is of course gonna be 2000 for the aluminum 80 and 2294 PSI of the steel 100. And the way I come up with that number is very simple. You take your working pressure, you divide it by three to determine what a third is, and then you times it by two to get your two thirds, if you will, or workable gas. Now, if we did it in cubic footage, it's the exact same figure. We simply take our cubic footage of the cylinder, divide it by three, times it by two. So 80 cubic foot divided by three times two gives me 63.5 cubic foot. And of course, 100 cubic foot divided by three times two gives me 79.3 cubic foot of actual usable gas. Now, one thing that's really funny here is, is the 100 cubic foot with two thirds workable gas is the exact same size as say the 80 cubic foot used in the entire cylinder as well. One's 80, one's 79.3, it's pretty much right there at it. Now, all that being said, the 80 cubic foot with full gas, or if I used all the gas, of course I'd be out. The 100 cubic foot still gives me a little bit extra gas, almost uh, 21 cubic feet extra of gas to make it back to the surface. So now all this being said, how long would each of these cylinders last based off the rule of thirds? Well, the 80 cubic foot with only 2000 PSI of workable or usable gas, it's actually gonna still give me 50 minutes of bottom time, which is plenty of gas, even using or having enough for reserve to make a 30 minute dive at that say 100 foot mark. Now, if I look at the 100 cubic feet, 
with only 2,294 uh, PSI to use or 79 cubic feet of gas, that's actually going to give me 57 minutes. So it's really not that big a difference. It's only seven extra minutes. And based off what we determined in the first video of 30 minutes being my maximum allowable bottom time, either cylinder will really work fine for this particular dive. Even based off the rule of thirds, I'm going to have plenty of gas to make it back to the surface, even in an emergency. But there's another factor that I need to put in here to help me determine and which one's going to work best. Well, it's all about my geographical location. If I'm in a warm tropical environment, maybe I'm in a three mil or a shorty, or maybe I'm just wearing a rash guard in a bathing suit, I don't really need that extra weight with me. So I would probably choose the 80 cubic foot there. However, here in our area, if I'm going to say 100 feet in our local lake, the temperature there is about 43 to 45 degrees, give or take. With that being said, most likely I'm going to be in a dry suit. And with a dry suit, I'm going to be wearing a lot more extra lead to help me sink. And with that being said, the Steel 100 is going to probably be my tank or cylinder of choice simply because it's a lot heavier than the 80 and that's less weight I have to put on a weight belt or weight pouch or anything like that. So based off the rule of thirds, my personal sack and RMV rate, what it would be at depth between the 80 and the 100, I'm probably going to be going with a 100 cubic foot cylinder. Now typically speaking, I would actually dive double 80s, not doubles on my back. You guys know I don't personally like that, but I dive double 80s side mount. So I got a cylinder here and a cylinder here. Now what I really like about that is I've got the extra gas. It's even calculated in for my buddy as well and I don't have to carry a pony because obviously I've got the redundant air source. But since I'm only planning a single ba uh, back mounted tank dive here, I would still carry probably a 30 or a 40 cubic foot pony bottle just for extra redundancy if you will. But even if I chose not to do that, the 100 cubic foot is going to give me the right weight ratio that I need and it's also going to give me plenty of time. It's going to give me actually 27 minutes of extra gas calculating using the rule of thirds than what I need to make the dive itself which is only a 30 minute dive. So guys if you got any questions on any of the calculations make sure to check out all the videos in the description below where we talk about absolute atmospheric pressure calculations, we talk about sac rate and RMV rate calculations and if you got any questions further than that simply put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. We still got one more video in this series and I'm going to show you how I personally set up gear for this specific dive based off our uh, planning stage, if you will, of how long I got underwater based off my gas mixture, what cylinder is going to work best, and now I'm going to show you exactly in, in video three how I set up my equipment to actually make this dive. So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you found it interesting, simply hit the like button and share it for me. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.